how worried are you about being replaced by GPT six? <laughs> do you think is it going to take six? The five isn't going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But like, I spoke to Rob Wiblin, guy from Eighty Thousand Hours podcast, like mm-hmm. big in EA effective altruism, existential yeah. risk, uh, and he basically said that he's like looking toward the twilight of his career as he winds down to be replaced by like robot Rob or like Rob chat or something. Mm-hmm. Is there a, is there something unique about human creation that you think that's not going to be able to be replicated by chat GPT down the line? Like within the next, let's say within the next 10 years. Uh, I think that AI is going to force us to confront a lot of very uncomfortable aspects of humanity that we have never thought about before, or maybe like philosophers have thought about, but normal people haven't. And I don't know what answers we're going to decide there. What like, what's some examples? Um, what is art? It's a very, very different. Um, here, so here on the broadest sense, computers are calculators. And we thought for a long time that that's all they can do. But things like creativity, inspiration, that's exclusively the domain of humans. A computer's not going to be able to create a beautiful art piece, make a symphony, blah, 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 right? They Clearly, they can. Here comes mid-journey, smashing that exactly. idea. Exactly. Winning art contests and triggering people. And, you know, now if you ever hate artists online, the funniest thing to do is when somebody posts a picture, um, just go on the replies and be like, this is so beautiful. What prompt did you use? Wow. And they'll lose their fucking mind. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, clearly, like, if a human can do it, a computer can probably do it. And that's a very unsettling thing for a lot of people to realize. And there's, man, I feel so bad. There's a lot of philosophers, like philosophy of language and existence and all this shit that they would have had a lot of profound stuff to say, but it's like, what is it like, what does it mean for something to even exist? Uh, so for instance, like if I can start creating stuff digitally, like, here's a question. Okay. I, I, I can use an AI to make like a fake person now. Right. And now I can get to the point almost where I can convincingly create like dialogue, comedy, like they can do like a full podcast. And you look at that and you're like, okay, well, that person's not real. So it's not the same. And I was like, well, how real are they compared to like me? If we never interact, there's a lot of people watching this will never interact with me in real life ever, right? Is there a meaningful difference between my existence and that person's existence? The yep. person that isn't even real? Everything's just like a pee zombie, right? Do a you know? little bit, yeah. Um, or even more like... Yeah, like, like, what does it mean for a thing to even be? That, like, it's kind of a, that's like a question where it's like, I'm really high, but now we actually have to really think about that. What does it mean for them to exist? What does it mean for them to be human inspired? But what does it mean for you to be you? Or what is it, what, what is the threshold of bandwidth and resolution at which you need to be representing yourself for it to actually be you? Mm-hmm. Does it need to be 95%? Because there are tons and tons of things that you think and do that don't come across externally, True. right? Like your inner world is a billion times richer than what you represent to the outer world. Mm-hmm. And given the fact that all that anybody else sees of you is what you represent, mm-hmm. if you can find something that does all of the outside stuff within you know, a couple of percents of accuracy, well, what, what, what does that mean that it isn't you we basically there has to be some axiomatic like foundational belief that just says i'm going to value something because it's human but it's like unjustified that's all it is because like we can imagine a world where ai is now creating art and maybe people like okay well i only like imperfect art because i know that it was made by a human well an ai could make imperfect art yes and it's like okay well right at some point it's like i like it just because it's human made but there's like no there's actually there's no justification for that we thought there was well it's beautiful because it's unique AI can create unique things well it's beautiful because it's imperfect AI can be imperfect well it uh, you know like so you think that it's just a question of uh um, f- like finesse and uh, and resolution and, and uh, how much detail this thing can go into that let's say I don't know whether you listened to the episode that uh, Joe Rogan like it was AI Joe Rogan did with AI the dude that runs OpenAI and they're talking it's a full hour long podcast and they're speaking backward and forward but there's some things that are missing in there fewer errors than you would expect the laughs aren't quite right you know basically the degree of humanness hasn't been fully replicated but if you roll the sophistication of the program forward, it just starts to, oh, well, what you need is someone to get the word wrong three times and forget someone's exactly. name. And da, yeah. da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So the imperfect nature gets brought in. All right. So are you are you out of a job within 10 years? Um, I, I have no idea. Uh, we got to figure out how it's going to work. And then you've got to exist within that paradigm and figure out how to work it. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is a thing that's coming and you're not going to be able to stop it because the, the technology is out there. It's freely available for people to work on and iterate on. Um, I, I'm not going to pretend to predict what the future is going to look like 10 years from now. Seven years ago, I thought that it was impossible that somebody like Trump could ever be president. So <laughs> why would I try to predict the future of AI? Yeah. What about the danger of 
AI created content online. We obviously had um, 2000, when was it, uh, Cambridge Analytica, 2016? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so, yeah. The Facebook stuff, yeah. Yeah. So Cambridge Analytica, for the people that don't know, was able to create, or it was able to deploy very, very targeted ads at super small cohorts of people that they, uh, the pain points of those people were understood. Mm-hmm. At least the copy and the advert for that had to be created by a real human. Mm hmm. It would feed back up to the humans and then you get some fucking shadowy cabal of Vietnamese copywriters to come and like do whatever the meme is that you make and then you make a joke about Hillary. Now you can do both ways for this. So Mm -hmm. you can find out which person has which pain point, feed that into an algorithm and have an individually created piece of content that targets precisely their unique personality to nudge their preferences in one way or another. Surely that's fucking terrifying. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know what the... I'm not going to be able to give you the answer to that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just yeah. thinking about the future demise of the internet. I suppose as well, you know, with social media, what humans have been trying to do, and this is what audience capture is at its heart, is they're trying to reverse engineer the desires and preferences of the people that they can reach, then feed red meat to that audience. Mm-hmm. But when you have algorithms working in both directions, it completely cuts out the content creator. So I wonder... I don't know. Within not very long, Eliezer Yukowski reckons that like fucking X percent of all content on social media is going to be created by uh, machines. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I, I don't know. Are we going to be able to compete with that? I'm not sure. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get spookier when AI is creating like full length like movies and songs and stuff too. That's- oh fuck! So yeah, so mm-hmm. nothing's safe. Yeah, exactly. So like, how, yeah, what is that? Because we again, we imagine we we appreciate things because like it was made by a person. We think. That's probably not true, though, right? The important thing is just that we think it was made by a person. But if it wasn't, like... Given the fact that we presumed that the domain of creativity and art was something that... Unique to humans. Yeah, but actually, no, they can do it better. So, so for instance, right, like, unobjectionably, um, copywriting, the the average copywriter on the internet is probably not as good at copywriting as GPT-4 mm-hmm. is. If you were to say, write me an advert for this two-bedroom apartment in Austin City Centre... GPT-4, on average, will be able to do that better than the average copywriter. Mm -hmm. Scale that all the way up. Then you could... uh, Fuck, I was just thinking, imagine if in five years' time, you could type into whatever the new version of ChatGPT is, uh, create me a 10-hour extended version of Avengers Endgame uh, in which this thing happens, and it'll probably be able to render that for you. Maybe, yeah. With all of the original characters, with everybody in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And the technology is all like, it's funny because we keep seeing the graphs of like, this is like technology. It's like this. <laughs> and it keeps seeing like, well, it's going to slow down eventually. But like, you got to figure like, what, 20 years ago, we didn't re- really even have cell phones. Yes. I think I was 18 when the first iPhone came out. I think it was 2007. Well, remember that the, the limitation at the moment, I don't think is computational. Moore's law, which is that is every three years or every uh, it's the number of transistors will double every, every some, however many years, year. right? Mm-hmm. That's I think that is starting to actually top out a tiny little bit. I don't know if it is or not. We're down to like I remember I thought it was like sixteen nanometers or maybe twenty nanometers was like the theoretically smallest distance between transistors, and I think the new tensor shit or whatever coming for the next uh, Google phone is like three nanometers. Uh, is Moore's law finally ending? Mm. I feel like people have been writing articles like that for the past like five years. Yeah, perhaps. What's the status quo? <laughs> Consensus is that Moore's law is slowing down. It might soon be augmented and then drive improvements further. Right. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. So, that's hard to know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, like look at this AI stuff where it was like three, two or three years ago. I don't think we cared much. It was still kind of like a meme. Yeah. And yeah. now in like two years, it's like, fuck. Game over. What's happening? <laughs> Did you ever read Super Intelligence or listen to it? No. So it's a book by Nick Bostrom who, it was like the seminal, this is how AGI is going to fuck us mm-hmm. in the ass. And it came out 2014. It's kind of technical, but it's a good listen on Audible. It's one of the books on my, on my reading list. And um, I remember th- saying on this very podcast, probably four years ago, I totally got red-pilled by Nick Bostrom. I was adamant that this was going to be the end of fucking civilization and this is what's going to happen. And now I'm actually kind of sweet with it. I don't think the AGI is that big of a threat. All of the promises that were made and all of the fears that came out the back of it haven't happened. Mm -hmm. And in the last six months, this has completely been fucking turned on its head. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, oh, right. And this happened off basically chatbots. Mm -hmm. And you go, what a chatbot is able to do, just scale that up infinitely. Mm -hmm. And that's like, Fucking civilization. Have you seen the movie Her? 
No, everyone keeps on fucking telling me to watch it. Uh, just a guy that falls in love with like a chatbot, basically. Yes. But like, um, in, like here is something that I said, um, that, and I still believe this is true. I think that our acceptance for new technology, I think it happens very quickly and it's normalized very quickly. Like we, we, there are some things we think would like would never happen, but as soon as it does, we'll all accept it very fast. Here's one thing that I'm a little bit worried about is I think that at some point, chatbots are going to get really good at having very human-like conversations with you. And I think the idea of having like a girlfriend chatbot, I think that once those get good enough, I think people will get very addicted to that very quickly. And it'll be like, shit, you'll have like thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that have like these kind of like Discord girlfriends that are just chatbots. And it sounds like silly and it sounds stupid and it sounds dumb. But I think as soon as you get one that communicates at a good enough level with you, I think people would actually get hooked on it. Human desire is a very long lever that you mm -hmm. can press down on. Um, I mean, you'll have seen this in your YouTube comments. I haven't recently, but I did a, a little while ago. People unironically commenting, just hold on, boys, the sex robots are coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was before language learning models and chat GPT and stuff. There was a white pill that one of my friends, an evolutionary psychologist called William Costello told me, which is you could imagine a world in which uh, VR plus language learning models plus very advanced AI would create a sandbox in which both men and women could learn how to interact with each other and flirt. And it would almost be like a game. Mm -hmm. So you would practice flirting and then that would allow you to take it. Because one of the problems and one of the reasons that people have approach anxiety is that the cost of practicing and the cost of failing are exactly the same. Every day is game day. You don't get to go up and have practice rounds. You, If you fail, it's embarrassing in the real world. There's no like- That's what I always say when people ask me like, how do you like, if I wanna like practice talking to women and everything, like what do I need to do? And it's like, it's super, super, super easy. You just need to have a lot of friends that are girls in like freshman year of high school. <laughs> but if you're like 26 and you have none, you're like, you're fucked. I'm, <laughs> this is a very high, but do you go into the gym? What? Are you going to the gym at 34? Sure, You're yeah, like, a little bit. Well, no, it's not, because going to the gym is fine. I can go and lift on my own. And if you fail and snap your shit. Yeah, that's, but at least that's on my own. But, like, social interaction is, Good like, point. so much scary. But it's, like, I've been friends with girls. My I had a friend group of girls because I went to a Catholic high school with, that was all boys. And my friend group of girls was at a high school that was all girls. So when I was hanging with them, I was getting tons of female interaction my whole high school life. So talking to women for me is, like, not a big deal. But if you're, like, 22 and you've never even had, like, a lot of friends that are women... Where the fuck do you start? Holy shit. Yes. That's very, 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 very daunting. Yeah. So, so it's like a hard thing to overcome. Yeah. One of the potential, like, again, that was so one of the white pills would be VR mm -hmm. creates a sandbox in which people can practice. Another reason why the AI girlfriend thing is maybe not quite as seductive for guys or girls is that there is still no status attached to it because you're not being chosen. So there is an element of, prestige associated with being selected and if all that you require it's like no one brags about the fact that they have an only fan subscription that they're paying to it's like anybody with the price of a cheeseburger spare per month has an only fan subscription what is special is being selected i don't know i'm not sure i think that that is special but there's a very real emotional component to it as well that, that might, might be, be more important yeah so maybe high. the selection thing is whatever but if the emotional thing is high enough because like there are people that get really i i used to think this was bullshit but um the more women i've talked to that have done escorting the more it seems to be true that a lot of the people that pay for escorts really aren't looking for like an awesome prostitute all night they really are just looking for like companionship mm. um and there's no status to buying an escort other than i guess you have the money to afford it but like the the emotional companionship that you get from it is like so big it's like fuck it i'll pay for it and you know? if you're sufficiently lonely because you're living in this atomized pod universal basic income world mm -hmm. that yeah what was and that? I was, it's hard to think like in our world like walking into um i think um i fucking hate the guy but andrew tate said this and it's i think it's probably true that pulling up to a party in like a fucking with the most expensive bugatti in the world is not as impressive as walking into a party with four really hot women pre -selection. right yeah. yeah it's um so like but and that's maybe people in our world might think like that but if you're like a guy who's like 27 years old and you've never had a friend that's a girl before are you really thinking is that guy at home listening thinking like god i just wish i had a girl that liked me so i could show everybody how cool i am or is he saying like i really wish a woman would just talk to me because i want like that companionship yep. he probably just wants the emotional connection you know yes. more even than the status signaling what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for a selection of the best clips from the podcast over the last few weeks and don't forget to subscribe peace